Lord's house. Amen. Amen. Hey, good church this morning. Good crowd this morning. Uh, down a little bit tonight. Mother's Day, we got folks coming and going and families coming in. But it's good to have church for those that can come. And we're glad you're here tonight for another good service. Lord bless you. Want to begin the service in prayer? Brother Dwight, would you begin our service, please? Amen. 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 All right. A few announcements for you this evening. Wednesday worship, uh, Lord willing. Uh, I'll be preaching Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock. Friday, uh, the Ladies of Grace luncheon at noon. So keep that in mind. Uh, 12 o'clock, Fellowship Hall. And I think they're kind of taking turns who brings stuff now. So that's pretty organized. And it ought to be a real nice time for the ladies. And then Saturday, uh, youth are going to Elephant Rock. Uh, 10 o'clock, that was always a neat place to go. I remember that when I was young, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's a neat place. They'll have a good time there. 10 o'clock Saturday, they'll be leaving uh, the parking lot, but that's for all the youth that are interested, okay? So keep all of that in mind. We've got several on the prayer list tonight. We've got so many needs, some very serious, and we went through a lot of names in the men's prayer room. I'll just mention two surgeries uh, Grace is having her surgery tomorrow uh, at St. John's Mercy, St. Louis, uh, I think around 11 o'clock tomorrow. Also, remember uh, Doreen, Doreen Massey is having some sort of a procedure tomorrow. and They've requested prayer uh, also. So uh, God bless you. Other than that, a lot of tests going on and folks doing this and doing that. A lot of, we got a lot of physical needs in our own church family, as well as so many others that uh, have been called in. So remember all these as we pray tonight. God bless you. Good to see you in church. Brother James, let's stand while we sing our first one. 305, he set me free. I remember going to Elephant Rocks when I was younger, too. I guarantee you he and I can't squeeze into the places we used to back then. <laughs> our jump over them, that's right. <laughs> it was good times. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt No freedom from my sorrow I felt But Jesus came and listened to me And glory to God, He set me free He set me free, yes, He set me free And He broke the bonds of prison for me I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. For glory to God, he set me free. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. And glory to God, I'm homeward bound. He set me free, yes, he set me free, and he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see, for glory to God, he set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound, not of the world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working and I'm praying to And glory to God I'm going through He set me free, yes, he set me free And he broke the bonds of prison for me I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see For glory to God, he set me free Thank you. 
Amen. 411. Oh, how I love Jesus. <clears throat> There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me what my Father hath in store for every day, and though I tread a darksome path, yield sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. And the last one will be on page 328. <clears throat> Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary <clears throat> Great and grace was free Pardon there was multiplied to me And there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. And there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. And there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary.
our evening offering we may give to the Lord as we love him tonight. in prayer, Rick. Yes, Lord. Meet these needs. Yes, amen. 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 We'll sing a song titled Redeemed. Go ahead, Brother Man. His day is long dead and gone. 
Because I've got a new name, a new life, I'm not the same, and a hope that will carry me home. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain for I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed and you set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain for I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. We spend a whole lifetime getting attached to things. And one of these days, we're going to just lay it down and leave it. Amen? I carried the burden of sin for so long, life scarcely had meaning for me a prisoner to satan and blinded by sin believing i'd never be free in my desperation i called on the lord at an altar of prayer I prayed through and the chains fell away like the darkness at dawn and he told me just what I must do I'll just lay it down and leave it I'll lay it down and leave it I'll carry this burden no more and the same hand that lifted the burden of sin will lead me on through heaven's door. Bowed down is this body from the cares of this life and trouble so often with pain and all of the money I've made in this life could never my good health regain but it doesn't matter to me anymore for soon now this old house shall fall and my glorified body will rise from the grave at the sound of the dear Savior's call. I'll just lay it down and leave it. I'll lay it down and leave it in a graveside. I'll need it no more. While a glorified body that's free from all care 
is arriving on heaven's bright shore. Amen. Well, turn in your Bible to the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Last Sunday morning, we preached about Elijah. There he was on Mount Carmel against all the false prophets of Baal. Remember how he called down fire from heaven and uh, basically said, make a choice. Time to choose. Choose sides. Hey, if the Lord, if he be God, serve him. Hey, if Baal be God, serve him. Then he called on the false prophets of Baal to bring the uh, bullock and cut it up and uh, offer it on an altar, and, the, and he was going to do the same. And, and the God that answered by fire, he would be God. And, of course, we know it was the God of heaven. Uh, false dead gods don't do anything, and so Elijah mocked them a little bit. When it was all said and done, they was all killed. Uh, the, these, uh, those rebellious, those that was in idolatry, those the enemies of God. And so they were destroyed. But we see the power of God. We see the power of the man of God's prayers. This was the man that when he prayed, it didn't rain for three years. <laughs> you know? Uh, and now we find there he is on Carmel and calls down fire. And we want to kind of take off from there just a little bit tonight. Uh, simple message. And you know the, the title of it. Uh, Brother Matt is not alone. Not alone, all right? Uh, you know tonight, good news, church, the Lord is with us. Amen. The Lord is with us. We're not, we're not alone. Uh, we, we've got so many people in our church family right now, uh, very sick, serious sicknesses, uh, uh, and others going through tests. And uh, Listen, there's a lot going on in our church family uh, this evening physically, infirmities and all kinds of things like that. And I just love to encourage our church family with that one thought from time to time. Listen, you're not alone. You're not going through this alone. And uh, you got a church family that loves you, and you've got a Savior that loves you so much he died for you. And he's with you always. Said he'd never leave us nor forsake us, didn't he? Praise the Lord. What a promise. What an assurance. And so the Lord is with us, not alone. But we find here, uh, in the scripture, uh, we, we looked at that this morning. There was, uh, let's just take off where we, where we kind of left off last Sunday morning. I believe about chapter 18. And let's start with verse, uh, verse 41, okay? It, it, was, it was there that we saw the, the, the verses right before that. Uh, they fell on their faces. They made a choice. They decided. They took sides. Hey, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. In verse 41, look at this. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. <laughs> oh, evil Ahab, uh, Elijah turned the water spouts off from heaven. But now he tells Ahab, you know what? Time to get up, eat and drink. Hey, there's a sound of abundance of rain. Pray with me tonight. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the good day you bless us with this morning. Lord, the great crowd, uh, the wonderful spirit of God that prevailed in this place. And we just left this place thanking you for what a good service you blessed us with. Thank you, Jesus. Now tonight, once again, we come to the word of God. And Lord, let us be reminded from scripture tonight, we're not alone. Uh, Lord, you are with us always. Uh, there's never a time you're not with us. There's never a, a moment you don't see us. There's never a, a, a moment in time where you don't hear us when we call. Lord, it's good to know we're not alone. So bless the service tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's just get into this. Uh, Elijah is finally saying, you know what? Let it rain. <laughs> hey, let it rain. Look, look at these next verses. We're not, we're just, we're not going to take a lot of time tonight. Some of you folks look as tired as I am. You know that? Uh, it's been a long day for some of you. Mother's Day, folks coming, folks going, and, and all of that. Uh, but let's get into this. Uh, be, let's begin with verse 42. 
41, Elijah said to Ahab, hey, get ready, it's going to rain. Verse 42, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. What in the world is Elijah doing on a mountain with his face between his knees? He's praying. The very one that prayed for the rain to stop is now praying for the rain to begin. And he tells the servant, hey, do you see anything yet? He comes back and says, I don't see anything yet. And he said, go again seven times. There's something unique about seven times in the scripture, isn't there? Remember when the old, old, old Naaman, the leper, he, he, he was so... Uh, Getting off the subject, but he was so irate because they didn't call down fire from heaven for him and made a big deal out of his healing. And all he said, well, just go wash yourself in the Jordan seven times. He got plumb mad. But when he did it seven times, he was healed. <laughs> but here we find, he said, hey, go look seven more times. Verse 44, and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, hey, prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab arose and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. I like that. Hey, God's hand was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. You know, the, the servant comes back, I don't see anything yet. And he goes back again and again on the seventh time. He said, you know what, there's this, this little little cloud, kind of like a man's hand. Evidently, they hadn't seen a rain cloud for three years, right? And they see this little cloud. Uh, you know what, and he, he's basically uh, letting him know, here comes this little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And, and Elijah knows, hey, the rain is on the way. Storms are coming. You know, it's going to rain. It's going to thunder. It's going to carry on. Clouds, it says there, the heaven's going to be black with clouds and wind. And uh, there's going to be a great rain. Hey, listen, when God does things, he don't always do it quickly. And he doesn't always do it right in our face. But you know what? Tonight, we can see a little storm cloud in the horizon, can't we, church? You know, we... I can, I can see that to mean many things. Hey, he's not here yet, but I can see the coming of Jesus just coming up on us. His coming is near. We can see so many things, the presence of God and all the turmoil the world is going through right now. And uh, like, like a little man's hand, God's going to show up. And you know what? Just like they found out on Mount Carmel, they're going to find out, hey, the Lord, he is God. Amen. Hey, the Lord, he is God. Well, Elijah, this man, would you agree with me? Man, what faith. Man, when you got the power to pray like that and with such tremendous faith, just as he knew when he prayed to stop the rain that it would stop, with tremendous faith, I believe that he knew when he prayed for the rain to start, it was coming. Because as soon as he said he had put, put his face between his knees and he's praying, and he tells the servant, go look for the cloud. <laughs> hey, the rain's coming. So well, the first thing I want you to notice, look what great faith Elijah had. Stands out, doesn't it? Mighty faith. Well, all of a sudden we get into chapter 19, but things just kind of fall apart for Elijah. In the beginning in chapter 19, Look at the first seven verses and all of a sudden this man that is so full of faith, so full of the power of God, and by the way, remember the 450 prophets of Baal that he faced on the mountain, I believe he had no fear and I don't believe that all he was, man, was he in the minority, one against the hundreds, but he was in the majority with God. There was no fear, I believe, in Elijah to face what he faced and all of a sudden this man of great faith no fear, trusting God completely, it all falls apart in chapter 19. And what that tells me, 
if a man of that great faith can have some issues and problems and dealing with things, why shouldn't we? <laughs> right? Who do we think we are to get so close to God in our prayer life and in our walk with God that things won't bother us anymore? Listen, if the right things bother you, you will be bothered. And if the uh, under, so let's get it. Look at it. Ver, chapter nineteen, verse one. And Ahab told Jezebel, remember that wicked queen, all that Elijah had done. By the way, remember who had said the false prophets were? It was her false prophets. She had killed the good prophets of God and replaced them with her false prophets. And now Ahab is giving Queen Jezebel some news. Hey, your false prophets are all dead. And let me tell you the guy that killed him. His name's Elijah. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Killed them all. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. You know what she's saying? He has faced all, uh, all things we can't imagine hardly with great faith. And this one wicked queen, this woman, she says, you know what? By this time tomorrow, Elijah, you're a dead man. And all of a sudden he was struck with fear. All of a sudden his faith faltered. Look at verse 2. Uh, I read that. She said, about this time tomorrow, verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. Hey, well, he wasn't running from, from nobody up on the mountain with God. But now he's running for his life. He's, he really believes she's going to kill him. He's fearing for his own life. And, and he runs. He runs for the hills, so to speak. He runs for his life. And he came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. And he came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. In just a short amount of time, I could say hours. It's been hours, practically, since Mount Carmel, far from heaven. God showed up. What power. And all of a sudden, he says, Lord, why don't you go ahead and end my life right now? Enough's enough. He believes this woman's going to kill him. He'd rather God take him out than Jezebel. So he, he's, he's talking to the Lord. You know, if you're talking to the Lord, you're praying, right? And, and he's talking to the Lord and he says, Lord, take away my life. I'm not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. He's now full of fear. He prays, Lord, go ahead and end my life. Basically, kill me before Jezebel can. And you know what? God shows up again. <laughs> I mean, gives him, he's, he's wore out, he's exhausted, gives him something to eat, gives him something to drink. Notice, cake that had been baking on some coals, a cruise of water, fell asleep, woke up, and he fed him again. And he said, take this, because the journey's going to be a great journey. Now, with all that in mind, I, I, I think we just realize he now feels alone. He is now full of fear. But God, listen to me, God is still taking care of him. Yeah. Isn't that good to know? When things come into our life and, 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 and wreck our plans and things don't turn out the way we thought they should or the way they would, and all of a sudden we're up against it. Sometimes our faith may weaken a little. Sometimes we might feel almost as if we're alone. But the good news in this whole story 
God's still taking care of us. He's still with us. He's still caring for us. He's still loving us. He's still meeting our needs even when we don't recognize it. He's there. Not alone, church. Now, as we go into the next several verses, uh, I want you to see this. We're going to go down all the way through 18, and we'll stop there. But there, there's a little lesson in all each segment, each portion of Scripture that we're seeing here. Elijah now goes to Mount Oreb, and there's a cave there, and it's in that cave he absolutely receives the assurance of God. Look at verse 8. And he arose and did eat and drink. And he went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. 40 days. Hey, the Lord said, boy, it's going to be a great journey for you. And it was, wasn't it? 40 days, the Bible says. You believe he could really go that long? Well, God said he did, and he, and he did. How could that be? Because God's still with him. God's still caring for him. God's still meeting the needs that he thought no one could meet. And he came thither unto a cave, and he lodged there. He goes into the cave. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What dost thou hear, Elijah? Hey, Elijah, what are you doing in a cave? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altars, slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Do you see what he's saying in verse 10? Now, I'm going to tell you something. God, when God asks a question, he already knows the answers. But he always asks a question to get us to realize ourselves where we're at. Hey, remember back in the garden? Adam, where art thou? God knew where he was all along. But then Adam had to recognize his sinfulness and God's holiness. And now he approaches Elijah. Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah begins to tell God just the way he feels. He said, boy, I've been jealous of you, God, because of all the things that's happened. The children of Israel, they, they have forsaken thy covenant, and they had. They had thrown down thine altars, and they had. They had slain thy prophets with the sword, and they certainly had. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life, seek my life to take it away. Now, again, keep this in mind. He still feels like he's all alone. God, I'm the only one left. They've killed all the prophets. It's just me, Lord. I'm the only one that's left. And now they're coming after me. I'm it. And they're coming to kill me, Lord. In verse 11, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Now stop there for just a moment. All these dramatic things are taking place around him. Hey, I mean, listen, there's fire, there's an earthquake, there's a great wind. And you would think it would be in those great things God's presence would be. But God wasn't in it. God sent it. But God, that, that wasn't the presence of God. And sometimes we look for God in the big things. Sometimes we look for God to show up in the big ways. <laughs> uh, I mean, listen, wouldn't it be neat when, when we pray, all of a sudden the heavens would thunder and we'd hear the... Uh, the, the vo literal voice of God speaking. Be neat to hear the big things. See the, th the big things. So there was wind and there was an earthquake and there was fire. And it said the Lord wasn't in that. Uh, but notice, he said, but after the fire there was still a small voice. Verse 13, and it was so when Elijah heard it 
that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Now just consider this before we read the next verse or two. You know, God wasn't in the, the, the wind or the earthquakes or the fire. It was that still small voice. Can I tell you, church, that's the way God still most of the time deals with you and me? That still small voice. Personally, I've heard of folks that have. I'll not doubt them, but I can tell you this personally. I've never audibly heard the voice of God. And we've seen some storms lately. But I don't know that God spoke to me through any of those storms. There's been a lot of earthquakes in the world. And I don't know that anybody literally heard God speaking through the earthquakes or the fires of Hawaii. I don't know that anyone heard God's voice through those fires. But the way God still speaks to every one of us that know Him as our Savior, uh, listen, through the work of the Holy Spirit, He still speaks to you in that still, small voice that no one can hear, and we can't even audibly hear it, but we, we sense it in our spirit as His Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Amen? So it's in that still, small voice. God still speaks to man, still deals with us, still blesses us, still talks to us. What doest thou here, Elijah? And verse 14, And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken the covenant, throw down the altar, slain the prophets, I, even I, am only seek my life and to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go return on thy way in the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. He's given him some instructions what to do now. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of, there's a hard name right there, uh, Abimelo, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Hey, you know what he's saying? Elijah, you've been praying to die. Well, he's not getting ready to kill him, but he's getting ready to replace him. Okay? Elisha is going to come on the scene and take Elijah's place. Now, God doesn't slay Elijah or kill him with a heart attack or whatever. You know what? God takes him on to heaven alive in a chariot. Why, it looks like he was raptured. <laughs> hey, he's taken to heaven alive. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but, it, but I'm just telling you, right here is where he says, you know what? I'm getting ready to replace you with Elisha. And then look, notice finally uh, verse, uh, I believe, 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. And I can tell you, it all happens just exactly the way God said it would. Now, this whole message is to get down to verse 18, and that's where we'll close. Because verse 18 tells us something. Hey, Elijah, you think you're the last one? You think you're the only one left. And there's no more prophets of God. And look what God's getting ready to share with him. Verse 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed unto Baal. And every mouth which hath not kissed him. You know what God's telling Elijah? <laughs> You've been thinking you're alone. I got 7,000 more just like you that have not bowed their knee to Baal. 7,000 more. Wow. You're not alone. You know, what do we, what do we get out of this tonight? Uh, again, we see a man with such great power with God and such tremendous faith, uh, and, and he gets afraid of a, a one wicked woman. How about that? And uh, he feels so alone. Uh, but you know what? We don't, we don't need to fear the false gods of this world either. And no matter what's going on in our lives, I've already said, so many in our church family going through 
some horrible times with the sicknesses and illnesses and uh, some very, very serious things going on. But no one ever needs to feel alone. You may be going through a personal struggle of some sort. You may be going through a financial crisis. You may be going through all kinds of hardships uh, from, from time to time. Uh, I, I don't know why anybody would be having financial troubles today. The government says things are better now than they've ever been. But believe me, people are struggling. Yes, amen. And understand this, and they, some folks may get to the point of desperation and really feel alone in all the midst of this disease and financial, personal issues, family problems. Hey, it happens. But here's the good news. You're not alone. If you're saved, you got Jesus. If you have Christ, you have everything. Hey, can't do anything without him. Wouldn't want to. He's all we need. When he said, I am that I am, man, he said, I'm everything you need. But you're not just alone concerning the Savior. You're surrounded by a church family. So thankful for gospel light. So thankful. One of my past visits I've had, not this last visit, I believe the visit before with uh, Sister Laura, Laura Sip. And you know what she told me? She said, I've, I've never second-guessed or said, why me, God? She's just loving Jesus. Here's what she said. I'm so glad I found Gospel Light Church and that good church family, all the friends she has gained. You know what I told her? Gospel Light Church is so blessed that you found us too. Oh, what a precious family. But then our church is full of all kinds of families just like that. Hey, we're not alone. When the going gets tough and it gets rough, and you may sense your, the devil would love for you to feel alone, <laughs> like Elijah. I can tell you, like I said, uh, I'm about done, but if Elijah can feel that way, we sure could too. You know, but we're not alone. We've got the Lord. Hey, if he is God, serve him. Two sides. But I tell you, we've been blessed with a great church family, so we don't have to be alone. Whatever comes our way, and I don't know what tomorrow holds, we don't even know what today's going to bring forth just yet. But I know God's on the throne and all is well. Hey, and there's more than 7,000 more just like us. <laughs> right? The world is full of fundamental Bible-believing Christians becoming more and more in the minority. I'll agree to that. But I tell you what, there's still many, many Christians by the hundreds of thousands that's loving Jesus and ready for the rapture. Amen. Praise God, we're not alone. Amen. Stand with me. That's just the simple message God laid on my heart. Good scriptures. Good scriptures. Let it feed our soul tonight. Can I have one verse of invitation? If you need prayer, the altar's open. Whatever you need might be. Father, thank you for blessing us today and tonight. It's been a good service tonight. Thank you for blessing the Word of God. Love feeding on Scripture. And thank you for speaking to our hearts and reminding us, no way are we alone. Lord, we have you. You have us. And we have each other. So bless now our church family, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Need prayer? You come on. Just one verse. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. It's been a good day. Let's sing. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just. Because he lives, because he lives, I 
said praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord.